I want to welcome everybody back to the May Ion Piscataway and Mother's Day is around the corner as well as Memorial Day and we're almost at the beginning of the summer season here at the Piscataway Community Center. Uh, I, I do have the executive director Kyle Strollman here with here today uh, to talk about uh, what, what people can expect for the month of May and possibly the month of June here at the Community Center. So Kyle, why don't you take it away and I think why, before you start speaking, we're going to have, we're going to do a moving tour real quick of the building to show folks who haven't been over here yet to please come by and take a tour of, the, of your Community Center. So Kyle, take it away. Excellent. Yeah, you've, you've brought up all the activity that's behind us in this moment. Yeah. Uh, but summer always brings a whole new look to this yeah. facility. And so beginning in the end of May, we've got our community can get really excited because starting Saturday of Memorial Day weekend, we'll have Raritan Rapids open up. So that's our outdoor spray park. If you're a member of the Piscataway Community uh, Center, then you get free admittance to um, the spray park. And if you want to just drop in for the day, we have day passes that families can take part in and uh, purchase a day and just enjoy some time out there. So a really great way to kick off our summer and spend time as a family and just, you know, have some fun and laughter outside. And, you know, I, I want to bring, get back to that point that Kyle just talked, spoke about. It's about the uh, day passes at the, the spray park. That evidently uh, last year was a big generator of full-time membership there when once family's got an idea of hey listen I can have this and this also as part of the package that was a big seller for the community center for people to join and that, that really skyrocketed the membership here at the Piscataway yeah. Community Center so I think what we're going to do is we're now going to go into the art studio uh, here and we do actually there is now some uh, products of uh, what people uh, made here at, in the art studio here and we're going to let Kyle talk a little bit about it so we're going to walk very slowly here so we don't have the camera crew trip over themselves as, as they're filming so so Kyle you can lead the way here well welcome definitely it is incredible to be able to show off and showcase local artists uh, in this incredible studio so uh, this month we are doing a, a showcase as you can see around the the room of some quilting uh, act, uh, pieces and so these are our, not only to be able to look at and view and from local artists that have, have put this work together, you can purchase some of these products as well. So it's a really nice uh, collaboration um, with the Arts Commission and each month they're turning over and we're showcasing different pieces. So last month we had an incredible artist for Black History Month. As we see today, it's uh, quilts, and we're just going to be excited about what the summer has to offer. Well, I guess a lot of our senior community and, and people of all ages here who, who design quilts here shows their capabilities. Uh, it's interesting enough, Kyle, uh, yesterday I had an opportunity to speak with a young couple uh, in the north part of town and said that they were members and that their do young daughter was able to participate in the uh, first, I guess, art class for, for, for young people. As students here and they thoroughly she thoroughly enjoyed it we have such a great instructor and so uh, whether it's drawing watercolors we have so many different art classes that are kicking off as you pointed out they are for we have a, a lot of experiences for our young members but on Friday evening we have a watercolor class here that's for adults and it has just been one of our most popular offerings that's been out there and so as the community continues to tell us more and more of what they want to experience You've heard me say it before, it's finding that spark, that, that uh, class, that item that you maybe didn't realize how much you had a passion or a skill for, and you learn it in an environment like this with some of your friends, with your community. That's really what this community center was, was built for, and it's incredible to see that coming to pass as we open up more and more programming. So for adults who've had a trying week, if you want to come here on a Friday and mentally decompress while you do your art water work, this is the place to come. That's the best way to say it. It is incredible, the creativity and talent that is uh, happening right here in this room. Good. So now next, we're going to let the PCTV folks do a quick span of the arc, or I guess they'll come back and take some photos of it. So now we're going to go out, and then we're going to go down and see what kind of uh, uh, things are going on down by the team room. Excellent. So, as you can see, we're, this is uh, uh, after school, it's just got out, a lot of the students from uh, the high school and uh, some of the other areas are now uh, arriving, say, after 3 o'clock, and yeah. 
it's the parade of uh, students coming down <laughs> Post Lane to come to the community center. But you know what, this is what it was all about. So as you can see, um, there's some of the students that are in here and they have the room, they're gonna go hide here. We're, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna go uh, surprise some of the students in here, so. They're anxiously awaiting your arrival. <laughs> no, but uh, this right here, this room right here is, uh, what was built for the students is so obviously they they're watching some Nickelodeon uh, on on the things that's right there so uh, but it's also a place where they can use uh, study their homework and assignments and things like that play uh, playstations or if they're into esports gaming they can do that here too <laughs> under supervision of the Y folks so it has been an amazing room to be able to have this what we have found is that our students have really come and made this a home which we're excited mm -hmm. by. That's part of the purpose of this building, and, and that was great to see that vision. So as you talk about from after school, there's just lineups mm -hmm. as individuals. Even on this gorgeous day that we're filming today, uh, how many people have come in? But this is a, a space that is specifically for them. Uh, whether it's TV, whether it's uh, on their own devices, whether it's just a chance to get together. This has been a very eager and, and anxious bunch to yeah. uh, get involved. Well, I had to laugh <laughs> for those folks to know when we were choosing the furniture there, my office staff, Dana Corbin, uh, had an opportunity to try out all the furniture for about a good six months before it was ordered. So, and this is like the type of furniture that's in here as you would see at a, a college dorm, you know, in a lounge area. So it's meant um, college gear level there, so. So versatile, so comfortable and amazing. She did a, a fantastic job of choosing the, what, yeah. what we've got as furnishings. All right. Well, that's good. So we're gonna we're gonna leave these students be right here while they're um, enjoying their <laughs> with their colleagues right here. And so we're ne next gonna go over to the dance studio over there. I, I think it's relatively quiet over there. Right there. So, so now we're going over into the dance studio. So if you really really want to burn some calories here in this building i've been told this is the room that it happens in this is there's so many different uh classes that take place in here so we've got a lot of our zumba classes we have trx if you see the yellow bands hanging from the wall we have we have different weight classes different cardio classes and then even as we've seen this after school crowd come in here this yeah. room has has morphed into a space where they can really do what we continue to talk about just you know the social media content they're creating their own dance videos. They're creating mm -hmm. their own things that, that are really interacting with each other. So if you see something on TikTok right here, it's probably, <laughs> probably been filmed here in the community center. Absolutely. But I have to laugh that some of the adults that, are, that come in here, every once in a while, a bunch of them that are doing their yoga or, you know, or meditating, they'll say, hey, man, why don't you come over? You could probably use it. <laughs> I kid, kidding around with them. So. Well, I, I think they understand all the stresses that yeah. you go into, and it is amazing. You're right. They come in here, they're laying out their mats, they, have, they will do their own individual Tai Chi classes, yeah. or they'll participate in a class, and it is just an amazing space to be able to function in so many different ways. And that's what we want to see. Uh, and then also during the pandemic, this acted as a, a multi-purpose area for the Rutgers Gymnastics School. Did. At, at a time because they weren't able to use the Livingston campus where, where, where they're housed out of. So, and you know, we really, we really pitched in, everybody pitched in during the pandemic, and especially the, the staff here at the, at the Scattery Community Center. It really was incredible to be able to see things that we maybe never even dreamt of happening. This was not designed to be, as you said, gymnastic space, but it was a great intro for that. And now we're morphing it back into what it was intended for. So we've got a whole bunch of new uh, dance classes from hip hop to ballroom, all of these different styles that are there. We've got a really popular Bollywood class that's happening here in the center, an incredible instructor that's leading a lot of these. And so those registration opportunities are open right now. And it's great to see the dance studio being used for the purpose that it was really designed for. The only thing we're not gonna see is Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Gray and oh. uh, Dirty Dancing <laughs> right here. Right there. It'll be the next generation of them coming, there you to, go. coming to life. Okay. So now we're gonna go out this way. We're gonna go down the hall. And then we're gonna maybe go take a look over at the, the, weight, the weight center um, over there to uh, see who's uh, burning calories over, <laughs> over in the weight, weight center. <laughs> yeah. So as we're walking down the hallway, uh, this is uh, the nerve center basically of the community. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, high school students and grade school students um, that, are, that are here because obviously we said before school was, was just getting out. Right. But basically from the times of uh, when school lets out, you have a lot of uh, teens and young adults Do. Um, that are mostly over here. And in the morning hours, it's mostly seniors that are over here. 
it is, and, and that's what's so amazing about this building. And, and we normally will tell people, come and visit us when you have the time to, yeah. to work out or when you're planning on using this facility because it does change so much. You know, we're going to have to stop Kyle here because I want Kyle to go take a peek in this room here <laughs> for all those young parents that are out there or grandparents. Uh, Kyle's going to turn the light on. Yep. He's going to show this room here. Now the pro now we really haven't started the programming up in here yet. See, you are you're breaking news right now, okay. and that's the the great part. We, we so we're going to see a scroll under the PC <laughs> TV uh, when we're filming this. That's right. When we talk about the opening up of summer, there is a, some some exciting news that's happening here. Now we have still, because of uh, the pandemic, had 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 to be careful, especially with our young, most vulnerable population, is meaning that they wouldn't have access to the the vaccination. So this has been a challenge, but we are going to open up Child Watch um, coming in May, and it will be a sign-up kind of program time frame. But that will allow our parents, especially with young kids, to have their kids in here doing activities. We plan to do some book readings. We have some art projects, and the book times for our, about an hour, hour and a half. They'll be able to go and enjoy one of the classes, maybe enjoy the dance studio or or one of the other spaces like the pool while their younger one is enjoying the YMCA in a different format. And then as a family, they can all come back together at the end. So in May, we're looking for- So you're looking to start this child watch up in May. And, yep. it, that's, and that includes grandparents that are members too that may have their grandchild with them. Correct. The family dynamic is mm -hmm. very versatile. And that's one of the great parts of our membership base here is that we have households that are made up of multiple different generations. And our memberships allow for all of those things. So as long as it's everyone's a part of a membership group in some way, shape, or form, grandparents, parents. You know, one of the biggest things uh, when we give a tour to other officials around the state that come in here and take a look at it, they absolutely adore this room it, in here. The, the way the color scheme, the chairs, the lighting, and everything else. Wait until the parents come out after they've enjoyed one of our other areas and they're their children have their new piece of artwork. It's This is just gonna come to life. Um, I, I can't wait to see when the kids are all in here because that's that's what this was built for. So now I think what we're gonna do is go watch some real uh, power lifters over <laughs> here right now. And we're gonna go into the, to the, to the, uh, to the weight training area. Right. Uh, so right now, this is actually a sort of a quasi downtime in here. It is, and that is unusual at this hour. Yeah. Uh, Normally we have a lot of our, uh, especially our younger athletes coming in. Yeah, a lot of people tied in with the uh, high school, with the high school team uh, come in here. And it's for those folks that know, uh, when this was under design, a lot of the equipment um, was chosen by the high school coaches. Right. In conjunction working with our recreation director and an outside consultant for fitness equipment. So. And so it's really well put together between your cardio equipment, your strength training. Um, yeah, athletes really can get a full, well-rounded workout in their off-season or in their peak season. Uh, so this this has really just been a home from, and, and it's important to remind everybody, this is not just, you know, we keep on talking about athletes, but this has been. As you saw, seniors, families, everybody is welcome here, and we've well, got- I do know that there's a lot of people that come over here as part of the Silver Sneakers program. Yes. A lot of seniors that do actually, they're exercising, you know, for health reasons that they're, you know, primary care physician said yep. you have to do X, Y, Z uh, on there. And, and you know what, that's one of the things that we want to make sure that we're a healthy town and people stay health-wise. Right. And this is one of the ways to do it is to come join the community center in Hawaii and, and stay fit. And no matter what it's outside, it's always 68 and beautiful in here. Yeah, so <laughs> That's true. We've got to make sure that it's always a great location for everyone. Now, we, have, have we had a chance where we've had a full room of spin uh, class yet? We have. So if, if you go into our webpage and look at our schedule, our spin classes are in full swing at this moment in time. And most of them are always uh, completely full. Uh, so people are coming in here and brutally... Uh, putting their body through the paces on our spin bikes. But it's a great studio because it was just designed for that type of You know what, if I was probably 40 years younger, I would, I would have been able to lift a lot of this right here. What's great about spinning, as we talk about different programs, is this is one that your pedal movement is, can all be the same as your neighbor. You're not looking and competing against yeah. them, but how you put your resistance, which nobody else can see, is what can change the workout. So it's really a great equalizing workout. And I encourage anyone uh, that has interest in trying something 
don't ever underestimate yourself. You may be surprised how much you enjoy a new sport like cycling. So Kyle, I'm gonna date myself here. When I was a young kid growing up here in town, I used to have to uh, go down to Rutgers Stadium, the old Rutgers Stadium, and run the steps. And if you see this young lady over there, we now, the technology's here that you can actually run steps without moving the position. It is amazing how that goes, and it, you're right. Not only do people use these incredible step mills that we've got here, yeah. but even in the design of the building as we go through how it was built, you'll yeah. see people run the circle around the track on the gym floor, run up the stairs, run the track up there, come back down the stairs. So they're still doing, you, you're not dating yourself at all. I now know. they would call it functional strength training. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna sort of meander our way through all these folks here that are doing their personal uh, <laughs> exercise here. Um, but we're gonna go up now over into the um, the gym, the gym area, uh, which I believe there's a lot of uh, students that are over there right now. And uh, I guess they're getting ready set up. I see some volleyball here, possibly. We do. We end up having volleyball. We have pickleball in this space. But right now, you're going to primarily see a lot of basketball. Some amazingly talented young athletes. Uh, so you, you could you could see right now, this is uh, a very enlightening uh, gym gym floor here in the background. Um, I had to laugh. Uh, this has the Carl Anthony Town seal of approval. <laughs> this floor. Uh, he, matter of fact, he was the first person to do an unofficial dunk on oh, here. Really? So, uh, but um, <laughs> as you can see, this is a very low to most of them are tied in with the uh, the school district here. Students right. over there. And then now, what days do you normally have the volleyball set up here? So we do have volleyball on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but it's later in the evening. So we're just, we always want, we found out that our community really uh, wants to see basketball. Our young adults, especially like right now, come out to our facility for this. So we try to still build into our schedule after, our, after school hours to at least have one or two hours of basketball. You're gonna see this convert into a, a Zumba class in about another hour and a half, two hours. In other words, you're not going to be hearing all the balls being bounced around <laughs> oh, here. It's right. There'll, there'll, there'll be people jumping up and down. Exactly. And that's what you're going to see inside this building is it does. It continues to change and it goes back to my statement. Come and visit us when, you, when you're when you free because you're going to see generational shifts. You're going to see activity shifts. This building is always meant to try to meet as many of the needs in the community as possible. At times that means you may come for basketball and unfortunately we'll have volleyball set up but it, everyone belongs in the Y. And, and sometimes you might see the mayor over there sneaking in on a game and shooting some hoops over here. I, it has been some of my favorite sights are when you're here playing with the kids. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing. I mean, you're, you shoot I, around. I actually still actually can make some baskets myself, so, <laughs> I, which is kind of scary. You see, I don't have the bravery to, to pull the ball into my hand. I'm, I'll give it to you every time. Good. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go upstairs now uh, and we're gonna get the view of what's up there. Yep. So basically upstairs, as we walk up the, the steps, uh, we, we have uh, upstairs is the running track, as, as you're going to see. Um, I, I love these steps going in here. Um, they're very safe. Yep. And they were told that, they were, I think it's like a 25 year warranty on these, if I remember from when these were uh, installed in. So I can remember when this was being built when there was no concrete on the steps. <laughs> it was just steel girder, steel girder metals in here. But um, it just gives me a lot of joy, Kyle, uh, Kyle, to see when all this came to fruition. So. Well, it is, it's so many people had a, a part in this. I, I really don't know that I've ever been a part of a community that is been so invested in what their community center was going to be. Um, I, I find it intriguing how many times I hear a story about this space or that being a part of a conversation. They remember those conversations taking place. And that gives buy-in. Yeah. And when we're trying to get communities together, when we're trying to get people together, there's nothing better than when everyone feels like they were a part of what, what is now such a beautiful So center. if I remember 14 times around the lap is a mile, if I remember. It all depends on which lane you choose, but That's yep, right. you're, you're, <laughs> you're, on the out, if you're on the outer lane, it's, it's that, so. But we also, you also have some equipment over here so people can look out the windows up here. You're right. Uh, this is something that happened, you know, when we were trying to space out equipment and we we're trying to, even though we have so much room on that floor, um, people were still wanting a little bit of extra space during the pandemic. 
And so we moved some equipment up here, but then what we found is this is such a gorgeous view, yeah. there's gonna be no way to take down some of these pieces. So it's been a really great asset. So the story that I shared before where someone's gonna run up the stairs, do a circle around this track, then do one on the track there. They'll also incorporate some work on their Aerodon bikes or yeah. on the rowing machine. So it really has become a lot of functional training that has taken place in here. Um, but it always amazes me. That's a good, well-designed building can adjust. So even with all the basketball noise and uh, going up against the baskets, uh, actually this roof uh, here had some acoustic uh, reduction uh, techniques in it where the perforated holes, which is supposed to minimize the noise in here. Because obviously you can see when you get this many people playing basketball, it does create noise in here. But I promise you it would be significantly worse if it wasn't for that uh, that thought outside. But interesting though, when you go out in the hallway, you can't hear, hear any no. of this noise that's in here. It gets contained, yes. exactly like it's supposed to. Yeah. You're right. And so this is where the uh, practice facility that gave us our sectional golf championship. That's right. Uh, the, the high school won this past uh, fall. Or, no, it was fall of 2021, I believe. Correct. Yeah. That's right. So that's the other thing is that in the after school, you would always see all the golfers <laughs> coming in from the high school with their bags tromping up, going up the steps to, to play on the track. Yeah. So when it was snowing out or in climate weather, they were over here practicing. And now not only do we still continue to have some of those athletes coming in and practicing on these phenomenal machines that you can play any course in the country or beyond. Um, you have individuals working on their own individual game. And we've recently just been able to open up, uh, this week in fact, we have got a, our professional out there that are training a whole new group of people that have never golfed before. They can give them some lessons and train them on how to hit. Um, and this has just been incredible. And and so these you know, $120 values we're able to provide in our community at half the price because people want to serve and, and show find that spark yeah. so basically the striping uh, if you see it down here the uh, I guess the gray striping is where the volleyball correct cord is right there so the gray striping is volleyball then we end up having uh, black and yellow being the, the different basketball courts because we got to remember the basketball court can be your traditional NBA court yeah. or we can actually shrink it down a little bit and go cross yeah. court and that allows for a lot more games and a lot more activity. The, the rims themselves actually raise and lower so that it's also Which perfect. is very good for instructional purposes. Absolutely. For techniques. Now, one of the things, so what we're going to do, we're going to go back down, and I'm going to try to see if I can get a hold of a basketball and actually take a shot, if they're going to willing to give it to me to take a shot. So we're, we're going to go downstairs and see if I can get on the court. Uh, but I got to tell you, it was, a, it was a joy to watch the middle school championship games here oh. uh, last month during the uh, NCAA Final Four um, to watch the game. That was the first official game that was played here right. uh, that where we actually had referees um, officiating. Absolutely incredible talent. Um, and you're right, this was their championship game and what better court to be able to all their hard work of the season culminating into a final game here. Yeah. Uh, the kids really had a blast. Uh, parents enjoyed seeing it, and it was a great venue for for those type of programs. So they, these folks here look like they're going to burn some <laughs> calories off going up walking on the How track. You because that's the other than playing golf, that's the only real reason you'd even be going up there. So, so. it's a, also a great view of everything else. But yes. Yeah, the amount of people that enjoy the track, walking around, doing it as a family, it's incredible the use that we, we see here on a daily basis. So, Kyle, explain, explain what this, this, this line is right here. Yeah, so as we've talked a few times about me saying that people are running around the track, we've got a full mirror image of the track that was upstairs right down here. So everyone has accessibility to the walking track. This is uh, the same exact one that's suspended above us. And so what we'll find is, is people that maybe find the, the stairs too challenging or are unable, they still can have that great experience of walking the track right here. Yeah, and if somebody happens to be in a wheelchair, they can right here, or if they don't want to go up, correct, they could stay right down here. So, And just as we said, the athletes that we've got, they'll do a lap here, run up the stairs, do a lap there, run down the stairs. So, All right, I, let, me, let me take one <laughs> shot. Can I take a shot? So uh, I don't know, 
What's your name? Davey. <laughs> Let me just take a quick shot. You got me at a disadvantage because I have my suit jacket on. Oh, all in there. Here. Let me just get one, one more shot. You gotta give me. Boy, oh, oh, give me a third try. Give me a good third try. <laughs> there, there it is. is. <laughs> Boy, thank you. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not used to shooting a ball in a suit. So, <laughs> so we're, we're gonna, Doug, we're gonna come on over here. So, so how's, how's everybody doing over here? It's pretty bad when I missed the first two. Didn't even hit. Didn't even hit the rim. Yeah, well. <laughs> You know what that tells me? That tells me I'm getting old. <laughs> All right, you guys take it easy. All right. So we're, we're finishing up here in the court. Um, we're now going to go out in the, um, in the, in the aquatic center, uh, which on a given night, especially when the, um, the Y swim team here, you may have up to uh, 200 swimmers that are here. Exactly. Practicing, which, which is pretty impressive, by the way. It is incredible to watch those, uh, those athletes time themselves out into the lanes, because you can have eight to 10 swimmers in, in one of the lanes. Yeah. Um, and so that means 80 people somehow rotating into a, a cycle. And it is incredible. And then we have multiple age groups that come in. And then you have swim lessons happening at the same time as families are doing their swim. Yeah. So, one of the great things is when the uh, high school team had their home meets here this year. So they, this was the first official year that they were able to have their home swim team. And now they have a place that they really have a true home swim team. Right. Or site, I should say. Because a lot of times they were using the Rutgers facility and going elsewhere. So, um, but uh, that's really good. I, I know they were ecstatic about this. I know the coaches were and everything, so. It got so much use that we ended up having two other swim teams host their senior night. Oh, when really? they were on an away uh, pool, but it's just such a beautiful facility that they were able to, to do that. Because swimming pools are, are a challenging space, especially for competitive swimmers in our state. Yeah. And so now that Piscataway has its own world-class facility, um, they're going to continue to just thrive and grow as a team. I, I, you may become the epicenter of the greatest, the next Michael Phelps coming out of a New Jersey world. <laughs> well, that, would, that, would, that, that, would sound, that would sound good with me. Was, so right now is, uh, you have family time in this small uh, pool here. So we have a, this is one of those great opportunities that we have family swim that we've incorporated not only in our activity pool, but also in our fitness pool. And this has been really nice because for our young swimmers, that are trying to either pass their swim test or something yeah. along those lines, they need to be able to have a little bit more distance. So they're playing around in the warm 86 degrees over here. They're practicing uh, some of their swim stroke over there uh, in 84. And so you can really see, even as they play a game of catch, um, we're trying to get the aquatic center so, for everybody. Kyle, what is the significance uh, for the different temperatures in the various poles here? Is there a reason why there's different temperatures? Absolutely. One of the, so we have 80, 84, 86. And what we have found is that when you're, especially in a competitive swimming, so we talked about our high school team, yeah. the age group swim team that we have, you really want that water temperature down. As you swim laps, you really create and generate a lot of body yeah. heat. Yeah. We would, uh, back when I was a, a much better swimmer than I am today, we would talk about it. If a pool was too warm, it felt like you were swimming in mud. Really? Uh, and so this is a competitive temperature. This is perfect for a lot of our water exercise classes. The Arthritis Foundation recommends a water temperature between 83 and 84. So we're right there. And, and, and as Kyle just mentioned, there is a lot of therapy sessions that go on here, yes. especially in the morning with our, um, our senior population here for, for health wise. Agree. Yeah, because it is, it's, you're taking and you're allowing yourself a mobility place. So when you're doing range of motion, when you're doing some of those types of workouts, you're able to do them in water where balance might become an issue on land. And it's just a really great equalizer. Plus, the harder you push against the water, the harder it pushes against you. Well, it's very <laughs> interesting, especially during the morning hours watching. You could see folks that maybe have had a leg surgery mm -hmm. or a hip surgery that you know under the doctor's advice that if they're able to go and swim someplace that their, their regeneration in their body comes a lot quicker with their muscles by trying to attempt them to swim and then you have some uh, 
coaches in there in the water with that, knowing what their limitations are due to their uh, physical temporary disability. Yeah. It is, the number of stories, and we've had them happen already in our young life here, of individuals that struggled to even be able to get into the water on their own the first day, yeah. going up and walking on that track that we were just on. It is amazing how you can regain so much of your function and ability in the pool. Uh, it's just a great therapy. It's a great exercise and clearly a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I, you know, this is what was great. Uh, and I think last year and will even be better this year uh, was the fact that families could go out during most of the day out to the spray park and then come in in the evening if they really want to stick around that long mm -hmm. and, and use the, uh, the smaller pool in here. It worked out really well. And some of those really hot days that we had last summer, that example that you gave was exactly why families saw the value of getting a membership and not just a day pass. Yeah. Uh, it made so much sense that it, uh, it was comfortable, it was fun, and it was a great way to spend time together. And and then not only when we were talking about those kinds of weather, but if it got happened to have some lightning or some inclement, we have a nice safe indoor space as well. So the picture of the bleachers over here just picture every seat taken over here oh. uh, at, at a uh, swim tournament all right here. And that's what made this crazy space, you know. And out, out here, if you've never been here before, so if you're a guest coming into swimming, there's a ticket booth right here. So the visitors don't even have to go through the regular uh, part of the building. They just come in here and then there's a separate bathroom down there for them. So exactly for the spray park, that's really isolated for swim meets. It's isolated. Yeah. But your image is is so on point. If you can think about those bleachers filled, that gorgeous scoreboard that's up there with your uh, senior child being highlighted yeah. on senior night. Yeah. You can see why this was the premier location yeah. for for swim teams and around I'm, our I'm, state. I'm sure a lot of parents took pictures of that. Oh, they like uh, yes. Yeah. How could you not? I mean, yeah. you think about all the the work, the effort, the time to represent their community, but their own student athletes, you know, growing as they did over the course from freshman to senior year. Yeah, they a lot of tears, a lot of flowers, and a lot of pride. So one of the one of the um, systems that we have here is we have the Colorado timing system, and that's still the same timing system that the U.S. Olympic team uses Correct. when they're in their training. So uh, actually, what happens is if you look at the uh, the diving, uh, the blocks right here where they jump off, then once they jump off there, then basically the timing starts. Exactly. So this is, it is a true world-class um, facility that has all of the the technology that you want yeah. behind a, a quality meet. Because, you know, these athletes have gotten so specialized in their sports that the difference between first and second place is often fractions and fractions of a second. So they want to make sure that they have that as accurate as possible. You wouldn't be able to do that in a stopwatch, but you can yeah. do that with our Colorado timing system. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's, you know, watching them in, at a meet here, especially it's really classy having the township seal on the diving block. I mean, that, that, was, that was very good with uh, Netta, Netta Architects design, design. So it is the little things that really stand out. But one of the things, one of the added advantages is that you have separate locker room and, fa and a family locker room. So if, if uh, a mother or father comes in with two different, uh, a boy and a girl, y young kids, they, they can all get dressed in the same same room. Exactly. So as you point out, you know, we've talked about all of these different generational uh, activities that are happening in the pool. Mm -hmm. So having a men's and a boy's or a women's and a girl's is really beneficial. But that family locker room, um, even for my own family. I've got a 11 year old and an eight year old. Mm. It's a little uncomfortable when my wife brings them here to yeah. send them alone through the locker room. Yeah. So to have a space where we could safely to be together, change. Um, and especially in this day and age, parents need to watch their, their kids because yeah. one never knows. As much as we keep an eye on everything, there is nothing that beats a loving parent or guardian that is right there with their child yeah. to prevent something, uh, you know, life altering. Yeah. So it, one, um, so how I, I think you you have a pretty robust um, swim lessons for young kids here. This past session, uh, which is beginning on Monday, so I past registration se session, we have 450 uh, swimmers that are going through our swim lesson program. Uh, we hope to expand that out. Think about that, 450. It's incredible. 
Yeah. And the support that this community has been behind it about wanting to be a part of swimming has been amazing. We were able to uh, sell out our swim lessons, unfortunately still in about 30 minutes. So 450 different children. That is pretty impressive. Yeah. That almost reminds me when taking uh, classes at Rutgers, if you didn't sign, sign on for your class, <laughs> we're gonna go over to some, the, you, you lost your spot in that class. <laughs> It's so. a, that's a real good example. We sometimes uh, equate it to concerts back in, yeah. back in the day of how it was like to get tickets. But I remember that going through school as well. If you uh, weren't the first one on the phone to get your registration, you were going to miss out. And we're going to go into another multi-purpose room here. Uh, we have right in here. Um, this room is used for many purposes. And Kyle, you might want to speak to that. Yeah, so again, we have this incredible space that... We've, we can see transform into multiple different pieces. So this week we had uh, one of our local businesses doing a um, staff training. Okay. So they were doing a lot of, you know, just the self-care, the to, to make sure that they were taking care of their own mental health and, and looking at those type of projects. So we had a dynamic speaker coming in for that. But then we had birthday parties in here during on Saturdays and Sundays. So kids, you just hear all the voices going, a lot of community events, a lot of the things like the Jackie Robinson Day we yeah. met first here in this room. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things that are happening in our community will take place right here, or at least they will be discussed inside this space. And actually this room acted as an inoculation site too for, for during the pandemic for those folks that needed to, to be inoculated. Yeah, that first run was incredible. I, I think we had over 300 individuals that were mm -hmm. either getting their first, second, or their booster d uh, mm -hmm. dose that was going with that. So. Um, being able to, to pivot and change and be there for this community in, its, in whatever its need is, has been great. And this area held a lot of food in here when we were dealing with the folks from Ida, uh, when we opened up the doors during that event um, for people who were down, especially in the Birch Run area, who were really affected, who could, you know, their, air, their homes were flooded out. Uh, they were able to come to a safe haven and one of the things that most people didn't know, the, the person who was picking them up on the bus and dropping them off here was none other than our chief of police, Tom Mosher. Oh, that's incredible. So, and then I, I had the keys open the, the facility up and, uh, you know, didn't, but everything, once it was opened up, everybody knew the lay of the land and what, the, how they had to operate and how we had to deal with. And I want to thank uh, the patrons here for being very considerate of the time that we had to close the building for mm -hmm. a couple of days why we had housed uh, several families here in, in, the, in the gym. It was a beautiful, uh, in tragedy, mm -hmm. being able to see, again, community come together. Uh, families were being fed inside this space. Kids were watching TV on, on the yeah. screen. Um, again, in, in tragedy to be able to see that, that moment of comfort and how many people stepped up, it was incredible. A lot of, lot of gratitude uh, goes We out. hope that doesn't happen in the future, but <laughs> if it does, we're, we're prepared. Yes. And we, we've learned. Uh, Things that we can pro improve on too. Of course. Uh, given the fact that was the first time we used it as the first, <laughs> the official evacuation site. And I don't know that we, any of us saw that coming the way that it did, so. No, uh, but you know what, I'm, I'm glad the building was here and built because that's, that's what this building was designed for uh, as an official evacuation site. One thing we didn't, show, room we didn't show you is where the emergency management room is, but that mm -hmm. doesn't need to be shown. Uh, but this cafe proves to be very popular here, Kyle. This has been fantastic. So uh, again, we have a, a large number of young adults that after yeah. school will come and enjoy um, a snack or their dinner or those type yeah. of pieces. Families, when you talked about the swim teams, yeah. how great was it that you could go and just grab something to eat, go home and still spend that time so together? So wh whether you want something very healthy or, or even like say a <laughs> cheesesteak, they have it here. Everything is healthy as long as you're trying to nourish yourself. It's all about moderation. <laughs> yeah, so I do know that there's a lot of folks that do um, order online or via their phone and they swing by and pick it up in the morning as right. on their way to work. Because we got to remind everyone, this is not, this cafe is not just for YMCA members. Yeah. This is for the entire community. So if, if you're driving by at any point in time and want to get a great lunch, a great dinner, come on in, visit us, order online, pick it up. Uh, the, the cafe has been a phenomenal resource for, 
for just being able to get something great to eat. And it has a lot of uh, rave reviews in the sense of the food, especially the health, healthy foods. What I love best is we've talked about some of that morning group in the pool. They now, many of the, the men and women that participate in that class, they'll finish up their exercise class, push the tables together, and they'll uh, just enjoy about an hour or two, whether it's over coffee or yeah. one of the breakfast muffins or something like that. And so it's also just a chance to get together and be together. And that's, uh, that's what Kyle, a good thing that Kyle brought up, that this is also a place to meet your fellow residents here in town. Not just to come in and burn off some calories or put some calories back on, <laughs> uh, but actually to get to meet some of the uh, residents that live in your community. Because this is your community center. We want to make sure people realize that. Absolutely. If we, if we haven't learned in the last two years how much we depend on each other, yeah. then... Uh, I, I just it's amazing the, the energy that happens when we're back together now that we've been torn apart for so long. Well, I want to thank uh, Kyle, uh, the executive director of uh, Stroham, for stopping by here uh, on Ion Piscataway for the May Vision. And remember, it's going to only get warmer from here on out. And uh, I can't wait until when the spray park is opened on Memorial Day weekend. That's Saturday. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of the parents can't wait either. It's going to be a great summer. It's, there's going to be plenty of activities here, whether it's classes, whether it's camp, whether it's the spray park, fun, food. You can't miss at your community center. So come and visit us. Look at how happy everyone is. Oh, yeah, you have <laughs> and this is, this is a normal everyday Monday through Friday right after school. When everybody this is a goes. quiet everyday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so with that, we're going, to, we're going to take it back to the studio. That's your moment. You missed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're out here on Rivercrest Drive uh, to give a, a little update on the construction project. I know this has been going on for a little bit more than a month, I believe. I'm out here with the supervisor of engineering, uh, Joe Herrera. So, Joe, you want to just very, very briefly tell uh, the general public what's going on. I know the residents out here have been dealing with the construction and have seen what's going on, but what the significance of this is. Okay, so... This, this project, this is uh, projects that we do once a year to improve all the intersections in the town, uh, replace curbs, sidewalks, uh, mostly do the ADA compliance for pedestrians. Uh, I know this area is near a school, Kanakmak, Kanakmak, I think it is. Kanakmak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so we're, we're looking into improving the road from River Road all the way down to the Paper Street. And I just want to jump in here. Significantly, that's the new federal regulations that we have here. Correct. That yeah. is. That, that in, indeed it, it is. Uh, also, uh, once, once these projects are complete, obviously, you know, the next step is for DPW to come in, uh, mill the road and repave mm -hmm. it. And uh, that pretty much completes uh, the improvements on it. And that will obviously be done sometime uh, over the summer over this the year summer. before... And we're, I think they're targeting uh, when school gets out, you know, so there's not a disruption in the school system right here. So with that, we're now going to go over to Netherwood Avenue. Okay, we're now out on Netherwood Avenue in front of St. Francis Cabrini Church, uh, looking t west towards uh, River Road Firehouse and River Road. And the challenge of this job, and this has been going on for almost a year out here, as the residents know, and the church and the school, um, it was a, it's a very involved project, one of the more extensive ones that the engineering department has undertaken in the last couple of years. So, Joe, why don't you just say what actually transpired out here? All right, so the Netherwood Avenue improvements entail the full reconstruction of the, the road. Uh, by what I'm saying by that is we came in here to install a new storm system, uh, curbs, sidewalks, uh, winding up the road to a uniform 30-foot cartway, uh, install all the handicap accessibility on the road. Uh, there was numerous uh, uh, conflicts that we ran into it, uh, one being the water line. Uh, water company had to come over here and replace the entire water line from mm. River Road all the way down to Hudson. Uh, they installed a 12-inch water line so it provides a better water pressure to the residents yeah. around the neighborhood. Uh, secondly, we had issues with the uh, conflicts with the gas uh, line as well. So the gas company had to come here, uh, relocate the gas lines, uh, 
put them new, install new uh, services to the houses. Same thing with the water company to install new services. Then we had uh, conflicts with the uh, sanitary sewer laterals. So we have our department, DPW uh, sewer division, come on here and work with the contractor to uh, relocate all the uh, sewer laterals. Uh, once that was completed, then we had to deal with uh, PSEG Electric, the cable company, and Verizon to relocate, I believe it was nine or 10 utility poles on a project. When that was, that was all completed, the contractor was able to move ahead and start putting in all the improvements and all the drainage in place, which would, you know, take a lot of the, uh, the rain off, the runoff that it was creating uh, issues with ponding and flooding on properties. So now we're able to contain all the water within the roof and discharge it via a uh, new storm system that connects right down Bambrook. So the long story is to, uh, the supervisor Joe Herrera is saying, this is a very complicated job out here. And I know the residents had to endure a lot of, you know, mess out here for yes. a good year out here, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. We're hoping by sometime in June that the road will be capped off and we'll be right. finished. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're envisioning that by, by June, the project should be complete. And as you can see, most of these areas here have already been, uh, you know, based. So this is the base and the only thing it needs is the top once that's, and that's the finished product and probably just do some landscaping, uh, tree planting, and, you know, and that should finish up the project. And this is not your normal um, reconstructed road out here. This is a very expensive, almost two point, almost just shy under $3 million. Under $3 million, yeah. And uh, so, you know, basically in essence, you have a brand new road out here and all the services out here for the next 50, 60, 70 years out here. It, it should last uh, <laughs> yeah. a long time. In theory. In theory. Yeah. yeah. So with that, now we're now going to go over to Adams Street. We're out at the intersection of Richards Avenue and Adams Street, uh, where we reconstructed Adams Street. Uh, this was another challenging project that we had. Um, unfortunately, Joe, you could be very brief on what transpired, but it's now completed and you have a safe uh, road now where people can walk on. Exactly. It's just like uh, the other projects. We came in here and we improved the road, made it 30 feet wide, installed Belgian blocks, sidewalks, uh, ADA ramps for uh, pedestrians accessibility. Uh, we did a retaining walls on the difference of the grading, the, the grade between the property and the road. And it was a challenging project because even though it was 90% completed last year, uh, we've been being, we got held up by PSCNG on the relocation of the poles. Yeah, uh, like the one right like here, the standing one right, right here in the corner. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't done until like maybe uh, a month, a month ago. Yeah, And back in April. Back in April, yeah. And the uh, contractor was able to come back over here and finish up the, uh, the ramps in the corners and uh, do the final topping up the road. And uh, this is the final product. Yep. Challenging. Nice but, looking road. You know, and I want to thank the residents for putting up with their frust the frustrations out yeah. here during the construction, but like every construction project. Yep. So with that, we're going to go over to Leslie, Leslie Avenue now. Okay. We're out at the intersection of Leslie Avenue and Ann Street over in the Arbor section near the Plainfield border. And this is one of the recently completed streets uh, that was reconstructed and engineered design through the engineering department um, within the last year. But, yeah. you know, it actually finished out. Uh, so Joe, very brief. What transpired out here? Okay, so again, uh, this project over here, we came in and we wanted up the route to a 30-foot uh, car width. We installed Belgian blocks, uh, sidewalks on one side of the street. Uh, we did all the uh, handicap accessibility ramps. Uh, we did storm improvements as well. Uh, to take and a new, some cul of water. a new culvert pipe. Uh, and, uh, and we replaced a new portion of the culvert pipe, right? Yeah. And, uh, we also have to, because of the storm improvements, we had to add an additional discharge out to the stream down by the park, on, uh, down by the end of uh, Ann Street. And uh, again, uh, we had some conflicts over here with the gas and the water and obviously the poles, which it took a little while to get them uh, moved. 
uh, once that was taken care of, the contractor was able to come in here and pretty much get the project uh, done rather quickly. And there's going to be a phase two to and this? There's going to be a phase two, right, which is all the improvements on Ann Street, Mabel Street, down to France, and uh, on the lower section of Short Street. And that should happen either next year or the, fo the following the year? The following year. Yeah. So with that, we're going to go to the next uh, street that was finished up. We're going to head out to Brotherhood Street. Brotherhood. Well, we're out here at the intersection of International Avenue and Brotherhood. One of the more challenging jobs that we had within the last 18 months out here. This was a DOT local aid job, and it was about $2.7 million out here. Joe, take it away. Okay, so again, this, this project, uh, we reconstructed the whole street from, Nether, uh, from New Durham Road to Ethel Road. Uh, it entailed the whole reconstruction of the road. Uh, Belgian blocks, sidewalks, storm sewer uh, improvements. Uh, they, we had a lot of issues here with uh, flooding in the past, so all these improvements will pretty much address those issues. It minimizes us, it won't get 100% of it uh, corrected, but it, it would be a, a great improvement to the area. Uh, this project also is a local aid project, so we have to be, uh, you know, and uh, we have to deal with the DOT with regards to submissions and uh, all the improvements on the on the street. All right, and now we're going to go out to Justice Street and Ethel Road. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now we're out here on a before. Um, we're out at the intersection of Justice and also Freedom. Um, the, this is one of the projects that is going to get underway probably within a month or so, uh, as well as Ethel Road, which everybody complains about, but. This, as you can see from the condition of the road, these are the old country roads going back from the 1940s in this town. Uh, and now we're finally reconstructing the area, but this isn't getting sidewalks. I believe it's just getting curbing for now. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, so the improvements on this road is pretty much gonna be, you know, adding up uh, Belgian block curbs, uh, putting up a, a new full pavement uh, section. Yeah. And uh, and then just doing a grading and dealing with all the uh, utility relocations. We are going to be doing some improvements on the storm sewer system down the road uh, yeah. by the like crib. we did up on Brotherhood. Like we did, yeah, we did on Brotherhood. That's probably part of the continuation yeah. to take care of all the flooding issues that they're having around in this yeah. in this section of the town. Uh, so yeah, we're um, very excited to get this project going. I mean, I know the road is in big disrepair and you know we're getting ready to sign the, the contract documents and I'll have a pre-construction meeting within the next uh, month and hopefully we can get the contractor mobilized here by June of this year. Okay and then that, that goes the same for Ethel Road uh, but I want to the reason why we were out here showing the after and now before pictures of a lot of these roads is because that's what, uh, and they're very expensive, that's what happens when you have balanced economic development in this town that the town's able to afford to fix roads like this that are in disrepair that have been here for like this for 50, 60 years. And you know, the town is dynamics are changing, people want to see reconstructed roads and there is a price to that. So that's why you have to have, get additional revenue into the community in order to do these very expensive projects out here. So between the, the, the streets that we showed, you're totaling up more than uh, $6 million worth of road projects. And by the way, probably no other town in, in central New Jersey is doing that many projects. I don't, a, yeah. not, not even close. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. I mean, we so we want to just show that people were reinvesting money back in within the community. So with that, uh, we're going to leave it away here. I think everybody's seen enough of the roads and the potholes and, yeah. and disrepair for that for now. We want to close out the May show here in honor of mothers from around the world. And they go through a lot and given the fact that what is going on in the world and both nationally within our country, I think it's only appropriate that we spend time with our mothers and then think about those mothers who are not with us anymore. So with that, we'll see you in June.